before you got into radio, and it's so interesting to me that you didn't even get into radio until you were 20 year, eight years old, and it was kind of like you fell into it. What were you doing for a living before then? I was doing marketing. And so I started off working for Wu-Tang. That was my first job when I graduated from college. Was it, and was I was it a real assistant. job or an internship? It was a real job. Okay. I interned there when I was in college. And then when I graduated, they offered me a full-time position. And I was assistant to the CEO. That was Divine, Riz's brother. Yep. And so yep. I was basically handling a lot of things in the office, like payroll. I was handling, like taking care of studio time. And it got to the point where I was the most responsible one because I was always on time. I was always the last one to leave. I would get to work. We had to be there at 10. I would get there at 10. And sometimes no one would come in until like one o'clock. <laughs> and it got so bad. They got like a punch in clock so that people were supposed to punch in when they got there. And then it turned into them calling me like, yo, Angela, can you punch me in? So it didn't even matter. I was punching everybody in. And then I'd be there so late every day because Divine would be like, okay, I'm going to come and sign these checks. Because we couldn't pay anybody until he came in and signed the check. And so I would sometimes have to wait there till like eight or nine o'clock at night for him to just come in and sign the check. And, um, you know, but I took care of a lot of things in the office. I learned so much. That was a great first job to have because I got to interact with all the different heads of the labels because Wu-Tang, you know, they were signed to Loud Records and Def Jam and Elektra and Epic and all these different labels. And so I was able to meet all these different people from the different labels. And as a matter of fact, Jizza just texted me the other day and told me he was looking at some footage where back then I interviewed Steve Rifkin because he was working on this Wu-Tang documentary that we still have never finished. <laughs> but I have some great and even back then, like I wasn't doing radio, but I was the person that was interviewing everybody. And he said, it's a really great interview. And I don't even remember. I remember going to Loud Records and talking to Steve Rifkin. And I can't wait to see what it looks like. But we have so much footage. Like I interviewed all the guys in the group. We got all this footage of Old Dirty Bastard before he passed and all of that. So, you know, it was amazing. But that was my first job. And then I went from there to work for D'Angelo at the label that um, they started Chiba Sounds at Virgin Records. That was like my nightmare job, <laughs> um, like the worst job I ever had. And it's interesting, I actually spoke to Angie Stone the other day. Um, her mother had passed away, so we had a conversation because you know she has a child with D'Angelo and that was her ex. And it was during that time when things were very turbulent. And so I worked there um, and then I left that job or really I got fired. And <laughs> then I left there and I went to go work for a marketing company called Avenue B Marketing. And then after that, I ended up just becoming a freelancer. And I had like several different jobs. I did a great job at the marketing company to the point where a lot of the uh, business that they had when I quit, they actually called me and hired me directly because oh, wow. a lot of his clients really liked me. Mm -hmm. Wow. So how'd you fall into radio? Because I, I'm hearing a lot of marketing now behind the scenes work at different labels. How did radio come into your life? So Paul Rosenberg, I actually was working for Eminem's clothing line. That was one of my clients, um, Shady Limited. And I want to just stress this, like whenever I work someplace, even if I'm not getting paid what I should be getting paid, I always go above and beyond because one thing I learned is you never know who's watching. And so a lot of opportunities I got came from the relationships that I made while I was working at places. And sometimes it was a struggle. I had issues. I wasn't making the money I was promised that I would make. And you never know who's watching. So you can't ever take that and say, I'm not going, I'm going to do what I'm getting paid to do. Or I'm not going to give them my all because the money isn't right. You still never know. And so just like I said, a lot of those clients said, Angela, we want you to come, you know, we're going to not use them and we want to just hire you directly. That came from me being there, even though I wasn't getting compensated properly, I still was going above and beyond because they don't know what's going on personally. So all they know is she's good at her job or she's not good at her job. And so I just want to tell people like you really got to represent well because you don't know and they don't know what your situation is. And the same thing goes when you're on the air. People don't really care what's going on in your personal business. Like you can't be on the air. I had a bad day. I'm going to just have an attitude all day. You kind of just have to still do your job because you're responsible for making sure everybody listening is having a good time. They're having a bad day. They came to you for you to be like, OK, let me cheer it up. Yep. And so yep. it was uh, me working for Shady Limited. That was Eminem's clothing line. I started off freelancing and having that as a client. And then they actually wanted me to come work in-house. And so I ended up working in-house there. 
then when that job didn't work out, because obviously the clothing line didn't work out, I actually approached Paul and said, I saw a marketing opening at Sirius. And I asked him if he could, you know, just plug me in for an interview. I was like, I just want to interview. I don't need you to get me the job. I just want you to be like, hey, we want Angela. You know, is it okay if we refer somebody? Because sometimes you just want that reference. And I never expect anybody to say, I got a job for you. I just want them to be like, hey, could you interview her? You know, we've worked with her. We think she's good. And so he said, cool. He called them. But he said, we're looking for somebody on the morning show with Cypher Sounds. Mm -hmm. And if you want to audition for that, you know, we would love for you to audition. I can't guarantee that they'll hire you, but at least you'll be able to audition. And so I auditioned. And I auditioned for like two months and then they hired me. Wow. You know, it's interesting. You raise so many great points. And it's a point that I always stress on the same platform. You never know who's watching. You always mm -hmm. got to go above and beyond. Give 100%. If you are committed and you give your word on something, yes, your money might be short. Yes, you might feel undervalued. But you go in there and you do the job and do it right. In your case, a lot of the upward transitions you made came from just doing great work where you were, even though you might right. not have been compensated the way you thought you were. So I'm glad that you stressed those points because people who are listening to this, they see you now. They see the success you've had but they don't necessarily zone in on the road you travel to get there and all that you had to sacrifice. So I'm so happy that you brought that point out to everyone. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.